and welcome to another Lakin International Live. On today's uh, live webinar, we'll be chatting about visas, study permits, and immigration. Of course, this is another Transition Tuesday. It's an open Q&A. Um, it is the last uh, live webinar for the Transition Tuesday for this time right now. So we've been doing them all the way since April now. We've been live every day since April. Um, and this is going to be the last week where we will wrap it up. Um, but don't worry, we will definitely have plans to stay connected with you online and offline in other modes. Uh, so don't you worry, we'll dive into that shortly. But first, um, I will <clears throat> introduce myself and then I'll pass it over to my colleague, Jennifer. My name is Jordan Ball. I am the International New and Social Media Officer here on campus. I help oversee our live events, digital marketing, social media, um, as well as our Global Ambassador Program, which I'm always happy to talk about as well. So if you're ever interested in learning more about the Global Ambassador Program, you can either chat with me or head over to our website, lakeadu.ca forward slash international, and you'll find our Global Ambassador Program there. Um, without further ado, I'll pass it over to Jen though, and she'll uh, chat about herself and what she does here at Lakehead. Thanks, Jordan, and what a great uh, few weeks so it's been uh, doing the Transition Tuesdays. So thanks, students, again for joining us. My name is Jennifer Hay. I am the International Immigration Advisor for Lakehead University International. I work directly with the other advisors in the International Student Services Center. And um, even though this is our last session, I look forward to continuing our communications and supporting you throughout your life as a Lakehead student. Awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us today, Jen. Um, Although it is our last session, I know that um, we'll probably have plenty of questions to address and I know questions will continue coming up uh, past today. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind just chatting briefly to our students who, um, who maybe want to ask questions in the future or want to get more information in the future, how is the best way to stay connected with us uh, over in International Student Services? That's a great question. I'm now going to share the link to, for everyone to our online community to care. Uh, specifically, this is my page, the immigration page. So it has all questions about um, before you come to Canada, when you study, and then after you graduate. Also has access to an online resource center with a lot of how-to videos and helpful hints for when you're doing application forms. Um, outside of that tab, we have all the other tabs for all the other services. So don't forget, we have conversation clubs. We have, um, as well as our, sorry, virtual coffee house that the students get together on Friday nights and chat. Uh, so it's a great way to connect with other students, learn about other programs like peer mentorship, um, and as well as connect with us for other program programming that will continue in the fall. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jen. So I'll cover some of the um, housekeeping notes and things to remember before we actually dive into some of the questions. Um, if we do encourage you to email us today, you might hear myself or you might hear Jennifer say, send us an email at immigration.intl at lakehidu.ca or send us an email at welcome at lakehidu.ca. So immigration.intl, that is the main email for any immigration questions. Um, that's also going directly to Jennifer. Um, and then if you have general inquiries, so uh, to make that clear, if you have general inquiries about Lakehead University, about admissions, uh, costs, scholarships, residence, student life, all sorts of stuff, uh, you can send an email to the general email at welcome at lakeheadu.ca. And that is monitored uh, on a regular basis, of course. And uh, we send out answers of all sorts. If we aren't able to necessarily <clears throat> Pardon me, if we're not able to answer the question necessarily, we'll be happy to connect you with the proper person here at Lakehead to do that. If you do have questions on today's session and you're joining us over on our Zoom platform, you can certainly use the Q&A function to submit those questions. We always encourage students to use the Q&A um, and, and ask questions away. We'll be happy to answer them. It's a way for us to at least sort them and view all of them chronologically as they come in and answer them uh, in order. If you're over on Facebook, you can always comment on that video and Facebook's live stream will uh, either have our Lakehead expert Yi Chen behind the scenes forwarded over to us here on Zoom or we will have her answer it directly by commenting back. Last but not least, uh, I do encourage all our viewers, we'll definitely chat about this towards the end of the web webinar, uh, but to stay connected with us, follow us on our social media channels. We uh, have regular updates <clears throat> about other live events that you might be able to join us for, other webinars, but as well, you get a sneak peek or an insider view of Lakehead University, which I think is really important 
uh, in helping make that decision as to where you want to continue your studies. So without further ado, though, I will pass it over to Jennifer. I know that she's marked a few questions that she wanted to answer, um, and I'll let her do that now. Thanks, Jordan. And before we get started, I just want to share that yesterday there was an announcement that the current travel restrictions have been extended now until September 21st. So this means that um, non-essential travel is still restricted into Canada. This means any visitors or um, even students who are new students. So again, if you have a study permit that's been approved before March 18th, 2020, um, and you have essential travel to Canada, so you have classes or labs that you have to be here for, you can follow the instructions that I sent out earlier this week in the email. So everyone should have received an email if you're an accepted student or a current student, um, and you can follow those instructions to see what you can do about trying to obtain a letter for travel. Please note, just having the study permit approval is not uh, sufficient for entering Canada at this time. Um, so we do caution you to please go through all the information that we're sharing with you before you make any travel arrangements to come to Canada, as we um, cannot guarantee any entry at this time. Secondly, uh, immigration continues to support our first year students. So we're happy to hear most of you have already submitted your study permit application. Many of you have received your first stage approval message, which means you can continue life as Lakehead student and you're going to register for your classes and start your classes online. As soon as we have updates when the travel restriction is lifted, we will be sharing them with you and helping you apply, uh, plan for your arrival here in Canada, uh, according to the public health standards and safety precautions that are in place. So I just wanted to share that little update as I know there are lots of questions around traveling right now. Um, we are doing our best to keep communicating with you and we've shared some important, we've developed some nice web pages and web links for you to continue to check throughout this time. Um, and of course we will share them throughout the webinar. So with that little quick update, I'm just gonna dive right into the questions. Before I start in the Q&A, there was a quick question I noticed in the chat asking about um, the admission. So just so you know, our registration is open for the fall and winter courses. So you can select courses from either term already. And if you need any assistance with that, you can reach out directly to our student advisors and they can assist you with that. Now I'm gonna jump directly into the Q&A. So our first question comes in. I have read that the winter term classes begin on January 4th. Can you please tell me as to when we are required to present on campus for the winter term? Also, will there be any quarantine required upon arrival since the graduate exams for the fall term are scheduled on December 20th? How are we supposed to do that if it's mandatory? So for students who start in the January term, uh, you should have communication directly from your uh, faculty. As of right now, there is not really a, a confirmed commitment what is happening with our January courses as we're waiting to see what happens with the current COVID crisis. So please just watch uh, right on the bottom of the slide has the Lakehead COVID page. Um, this is where we will share any updates with students when it's regarding to our program delivery. So please just watch that. As of right now, the travel restrictions have been extended as I was just sharing, so you cannot make any plans to come to Canada unless you meet that exemption requirement. If you do have exams that fall on December 20th, I would encourage you to reach out to your faculty directly as most of the first year courses are offered online, including the exam portion. Anything to add to that at all, Jordan? No, um, I guess I'll note also, like you said, at the bottom of uh, your screen, you should see a link directly to our uh, Lakehead new COVID-19 page. So that's lakeheadu.ca forward slash vote forward slash coronavirus. So that page is built for uh, both students, faculty, staff, but the resources that are available to students specifically um, are quite abundant. So we do have a resources page where you can access all sorts of tools to uh, assist with online learning, uh, keep your mental health stable, all that sort of stuff. But also, most importantly, I think, is the FAQs. Um, the FAQs are frequently asked questions where students uh, might have really common questions that we've been receiving plenty of. We'll pass it up the chain to um, upper administration here at Lakehead University, and then they add it to the page with a finalized answer or um, the most up-to-date answer. As Jen said, of course, uh, we haven't made a decision for the delivery method for winter 2021. And with that being said, we also can't confirm whether or not you will be required to quarantine based on the uh, 
uh, immigration guidelines, but also uh, the border security guidelines. So those are all sort of questions that are hopefully will be answered in the coming months. Um, we know they will be, of course. Um, we just don't have a, a firm date as to when we will know at this point. Um, as I said, though, in many other webinars, and I'll remind everyone today, uh, if you are a Lakewood University applicant already, and you're in our email communication system and you receive our emails as an update already, we'll certainly be communicating with you on a regular basis. And with any major announcements such as that, we will certainly publish that in our email as well. We will do our best to publish it online on our website and um, on our social media channels. I'll pass it back to you, Jen, though, to keep plowing through the next question. Sounds good. So the next question coming in. Good morning. Actually, I've been awarded a scholarship and was told that my tuition would be adjusted against the scholarship amount and I don't need to pay the fee. However, I've not received any written communication regarding the same. Due to the same, I am unable to apply for my visa. Is it possible that we can attach the scholarship letter received from the Lakehead on Lakehead letterhead um, instead of the tuition fee received for one year? So this is a good question. And first and foremost, congratulations on getting a scholarship. So yes, you can do this. The Lakehead scholarship will, um, the letter should entail how much that they're funding you. So it will say it's covering so much of your tuition or so much of your tuition and living expenses. So please note when immigration is looking at proof of finance, they're looking to see that you have enough tuition for your first year plus your living expenses. So if the scholarship is just for a portion of it, you may still have to show additional funds from your own bank account or through other tuition receipts if you're still making payments. Um, or again, showing your own funds in your own um, home bank account for your living expenses. So you can put multiple documents together for your proof of finance. Again, if you click on that little question mark when you're on the uploading page, it will give you some ideas of different documents that you can upload to show this. And I think awesome. you have the next one, Jordan. I do, yes. I might, I might have to pass it over to you. Um, uh, but this one is, in order to apply for a visa for winter 2021, I'm required to pay the tuition fee and submit the proofs. Uh, but I still don't see the fee to be paid in the account section in the student tab of my info portal. When will this, uh, when will I be able to pay the fees so that I can start my visa process? So that's a really great question. Um, fees are applied to student accounts uh, upon registration of courses. So if you're an undergraduate student, um, a course registration is open for the full year now, full academic year uh, between September and April. So you can actually register for those winter courses already. Um, and for students that are joining us in just a few short weeks here for the fall term, you can actually apply for your winter courses as well as also your full year long courses. So those courses that last all the way from September to April. If you're in a graduate program, um, your course registration is slightly different. Uh, graduate studies and your graduate coordinator within your department or within your faculty will connect with you and they will help with that registration process. With this being said, um, that does not happen until uh, closer into the winter registration or the winter intake date of January. Um, and with visa processing, Jen, do you have any advice for them? If uh, I know that um, paying tuition may be a part of certain uh, immigration applications, uh, but maybe if you could clarify with that. There's uh, many different ways you can do this. So even now, IRCC is allowing people to submit incomplete applications so that they can get their application processed in time. Um, but generally, I'd say three months. Three months is a good time to apply before your study permit. So um, hopefully by October, you'll have a payment or um, you can show other proof of finance to include your application. And if your payment comes to Lakehead later on, you can always update your file. So once you submit your application to IRCC online through the, the IRCC website, you will have an application number and some information. So anytime you want to add a file, you can do what's called submitting a web form. So again, through their website, you would send in a little web form and you can up upload up to four different files to attach to your application. As long as it's still in progress, they will accept those uh, documents and include it with your file for review. So um, if you can't make the payment before three months before your start date, I would say then make sure that you show your bank statement. So showing the funds in your own bank account, writing a letter that you are planning to pay the tuition when you can, and then say that you will update the file later on. And then once you make that payment to Lakehead, maybe later on in October or November, you can upload your, that 
payment tuition receipt to your file and then it will conclude your file. Awesome. And I know I did mark the next question, but it's definitely a one for you. Um, so maybe you know uh, the answer to this one better than I do. It says, hello, does SDS have higher precedence than normal study firms or is it the same? So the student direct stream is uh, developed just because of that. So it does have faster processing and higher approval rates, but it also has higher requirements. So you need to make what's called the GIC, a guaranteed investment certificate, usually with your bank in your home country. Um, and again, sorry, I should clarify that SDS is not open to all applicants. It's only open to specific countries. So if you are in one of the countries that are eligible, you can apply um, using again this GIC, which means you are paying this $10,000 of your living expenses directly into a bank so it's a guaranteed money sitting there and this money is sent to you um, in monthly allotments once you're here in Canada to help you with your living expenses so it's just another way for immigration to ensure you can financially support yourself while you're here and because it's such a um, it's such a highly approved process that it, your processing for visas is done quicker and the approval rate is much higher but if you apply through the SDS stream and you do not meet the eligibility, you do, you do not receive a refusal, your application will then just be um, flown over into the regular stream. Awesome, thanks for answering that. And then I know you've marked the next question, so I'll let you uh, segue into that. I know we've slightly addressed it in the one just before this, but it's a different wording, so uh, we'll, we'll answer either way. Of course. So the next question asking, I have moved my admission from fall to winter. When should I register for courses and start the process like visa? So um, if you've received your updated letter of acceptance or confirmation that you've moved your uh, admission to the winter term, first, if you're an undergraduate student, you can still register for your classes now. And again, you can reach out to any of our advisors, to Laura, Latifa, or Vijay, if you need assistance picking your classes. If you're a master's student, you'll continue to just work with uh, grad studies, as Jordan has already indicated. So uh, the registration part is one thing, and then the visa is the other. So if you have an undergraduate letter of acceptance, likely on your letter it says fall 2020 or winter 2021 admission. So you can start your visa process at any time. And due to COVID, we know there's many delays in processing. Uh, so of course, we encourage you as soon as you have your letter of acceptance to start your visa process online. <clears throat> Thanks, Jen. And obviously, uh, that's something that I would echo too, is something we've talked about a countless number of times over the last uh, couple of months, is that if you do have an offer of admission or a letter of acceptance to Lakewood University, we encourage you to start that process for that visa permit, uh, study permit, pardon me, um, online as soon as possible. And then as you receive more updated information or as uh, some of the back offices start opening, then you can, of course, start submitting some of those next stages within the process. Um, the next question I have is, hi, I have deferred my fall admission to winter term. Uh, when should I arrive at Lakehead? Can I go to my friend's house and stay there for two weeks, uh, a two week period of quarantine? So that's a really great question. Um, <clears throat> with regards to the first part, when should you arrive at Lakehead if you're joining us for this winter term? Um, I would uh, recommend students to certainly take into consideration that quarantining will most likely still be practiced at that time. Um, I can't guarantee that, of course. That's a decision made by the federal government here in Canada. I have no influence on that, neither does Lakehead University. Uh, and we want to make sure that our students, staff, and faculty are all safe. Uh, and so this is a, major, a significant part as uh, we do our part as Lakehead University community. Um, to the second part, can I stay, uh, go to my friend's house and stay there for two weeks during the quarantine? Um, as far as I know that, there would be no restrictions with, along the lines of that. It actually might be quite helpful that you'll be able to quarantine alone in that, with your, your friend as long as you two are not interacting and your friend will be able to help uh, you provide you food and be able to go and get any of your necessities at the grocery stores or um, some of the convenience stores. Of course, so if you are staying with someone and you're not able to uh, properly isolate from them, they should also be isolating as well. If you are coming into contact with someone, uh, they, they should not be going out and still acting as if everything's normal. So please uh, take into consideration that and uh, make sure that you're fully aware of the quarantine guidelines set out by the Canadian government, uh, because if you are um, 
doing anything wrong or if you are uh, not abiding by the rules set out by that quarantine plan, um, you could definitely be in some serious trouble with the federal government. Yeah, and if I can add a little bit to that, uh, Jordan, for like, I can tell everyone a little snapshot about what's happening for right now as students are arriving for the September intake. Um, but just so you know, uh, new students who do not have a study permit approval from before March 18th, 2020, um, should not be making any travel arrangements at this point. We've had a lot of students who have tried to enter Canada, not for Lakehead, but for other schools, of course, and unfortunately have been sent directly back home. So it's a long travel and it's at your own expense. So we definitely caution you to not make any travel arrangements until we know more about the current travel restrictions. As we know, they were in place for August 31st. It's about halfway through the month. So I would think around September 15th, we'll get another announcement about the updated restrictions going forward for students coming. And that may help Lakehead make some decisions about what will be happening with the courses. So please stay patient as we are all in this together. And of course, uh, the Canadian government, our institution, we are all here to support you through this hard time. So with that being said, we will caution you that anything that is happening right now is always subject to change. And of course, we share any updates from CBSA, which is our, our Port of Entry Border Services, and IRCC, which is Immigration, about any travel restrictions as soon as we are notified. So for students who are returning to Canada, so current students who started their studies maybe in 2017, 2018, or 19, um, that have to come back for mandatory co-op or lab or research components, uh, what happens is that they actually have to go through a process where they request a letter from Lakehead, and then we vet the information that they've said, stated of why they have to be on campus and make sure that they do meet the requirements, and then we will provide a letter for travel. So once this letter is provided, then the student actually has to do a quarantine commitment plan. So yes, students who arrive into Canada right now have to do a two-week isolation. Of course, you're able to come directly to Thunder Bay or to Aurelia to have your two-week isolation. And as Jordan mentioned, being with a family or a friend is obviously the best case scenario as we know that someone is there to support you um, and you are established. Of course, if you have any symptoms upon arrival or throughout that two week period, you will be subject to obviously going to the hospital and um, having some medical treatment and so forth. So we just urge everyone to make sure that they're following all the protocols. And of course, things are changing every single day. So you must just be aware of those two websites I've shared for the quarantine plan and the travel letter request. But as for new students, since your classes are online this fall, um, we would urge you just to continue to do as we've been stating, register for your classes and start your program online. Awesome, thanks Jen. And also to add on to that, um, another, uh, a uh, good plan for students that are potentially joining us here in Canada is that if you are looking for somewhere to quarantine, uh, another really positive option is to stay at Lakehead University's residence. Uh, both our residences in Aurelia as well as Thunder Bay are open. Um, they are abiding by physical distancing policies as well as uh, regulations and policies set up by the public health authorities within Canada. Um, and so we can ensure that there's going to be a, a safe environment within both of our residence facilities and allow for proper quarantining for students that are joining us from an international or a hotspot um, and traveling to either one of our campuses. Uh, with that being said, of course, if you want to learn more about Lakehead's residence, uh, you can visit us at lakehead.ca forward slash residence. And that is our main website. You can learn more about all the different options, the costs associated with it. Uh, as Lakehead International, we certainly recommend all of our first year students. If it's your first time coming to Canada, first time joining us here at Lakehead University, residence is the most popular option or one of the most popular options. And it's also the one that we highly recommend. Uh, your access to support services, a more curated experience, as well as the connections that you're able to make in the on-campus community are quite significant and that's something that we're really proud of and then uh, potentially after after a full year on campus or in that first semester in residence uh, if you choose to move off campus uh, that's all the power to you you've met people you know your city you know Thunder Bay you know Canada you know Aurelia all that sort of stuff lines up quite well um, but we also oftentimes will see students that stay uh, after first year and will stay on residence second year, third year, fourth year, and they just, they absolutely love it. And they, they recognize the convenience of being a short walk, in some cases, as little as one to two minutes from campus, at most maybe 
five, six, seven minutes from um, their classroom and they can walk there so they can kind of roll out of bed and go right to class. So uh, we always like to see that and hear from that. Yeah, and um, I can't tell you how much of a benefit that will be if you are coming for the January term, as you will probably be coming in very, very cold temperatures that you are not used to at all. Um, so we're lucky that we have what's called a tunnel system connecting most of our buildings. And if you stay on campus, you don't have to worry about any weights at the bus stop or traveling. You can just quickly walk over to your classes and then back to your nice, warm, cozy room. <laughs> For sure. So I'll answer um, one of the questions and then Jen, I know you're going to answer one in the chat here from Facebook. So the first question I'll answer is, hi, I'm a counselor from Nepal. Um, I raise students interest towards Canada. COVID has caused delays and the high school exam and has not been conducted yet. Uh, what would be the appropriate time for them to apply? Is there any consideration or waiver for the test scores like TOEFL or SAT? Um, and then there's a second part of that question that I think, Jen, you might be able to address uh, slightly. Uh, speaking to the first part with relations to admissions. So yes, our admissions teams, both at undergraduate and graduate level, recognize that uh, many board exams, many final exams, schools in general, um, were significantly delayed or even canceled uh, due to COVID-19. And they're taking that into consideration. They're working with each applicant on an individual basis. Uh, as it is, Lakehead University does not require an SAT uh, score or application, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, with regards to TOEFL, of course, um, right now we do temporarily accept the Duolingo English test, uh, which can be completed, be, can be completed sorry, uh, fully online, so you can actually have your student do it from the comfort of their own home, and they can use that towards the admissions. Uh, portion of their application. Um, I also have heard that TOEFL and IELTS are potentially looking into similar options like that. And we also know that TOEFL and IELTS centers and testing uh, facilities are opening up in certain countries across the world. So keep that in mind. Um, with regards to the high school exam and that being conducted, I'll remind you though, if you would like to connect with our admissions team, we'll be live tomorrow on our Wednesday weekly, 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, so that's the Thunder Bay time essentially. Um, and you can join us in and ask our admissions officers directly right then and there. If you would prefer to connect with them offline, you can certainly send us an email at welcome at lakehead.ca and we'll be happy to connect you with the, the admissions teams, whether it be undergraduate, if that's your focus as a counselor for undergraduate students, or if it's for graduate studies, that master's, postdoctoral, that sort of stuff, we'll be happy to connect you with graduate studies. Um, Jen, I'll let you answer the second part of that question if you wouldn't mind. Yes, and I'm glad to hear as a counselor from Nepal that you're seeing a lot more interest in students picking Canada as a, an edu education destination across the globe. And uh, just so you know, in Thunder Bay, we actually have quite a big Nepalese uh, community in our small little city. Um, so anyone coming here would probably feel very comfortable and easily connect with other people from their home country within our community. So um, it's nice to hear that. For visa approval rates, this is a question I've pondered for 10 years and we often ask when we uh, get to meet with the high commissioners or visa officers from across the globe or in different areas. So of course we always challenge when they say we have specific high numbers of students that come from specific countries. We say that's where the highest uh, visa approval rate is so it makes sense to us. And of course as Canadian institutions would love to uh, diversify their market and have students come from everywhere, of course every student can be accepted to Lakehead. Um, it's hard with the visa processing. So of course the SDS stream, the student direct stream has been quite successful in some markets where there has been harder um, it's been harder to obtain the visa approvals and of course as with the success they are expanding the program and of course Nepal is one of the ones that have been suggested for it to be rolled out to so we would love to see that um, for you I would just say making sure that you can meet all the requirements um, of the visa process, having a really strong statement of purpose explaining what's going on. I'm not sure exactly the reasoning why we see lots of refusals from Nepal. I don't know if it's a proof of finance or um, not satisfied they will leave after their designated stay, but it can be um, easier to try to, what's it called, address the specific refusal of the student. So, um, of course, visa processing rates is something that's always on everyone's re radar and doesn't always make sense as immigration should be immigration no matter where you apply in the world. It's something that we constantly tackle. 
And the last thing, what was I going to mention, it was about the application being not um, complete. So you can apply to Lakehead and receive a conditional letter of acceptance, just stating that you're waiting for those last documents to be completed. So even with a conditional letter of acceptance, you can apply for a study visa. I'm assuming that it obviously is better if you have an unconditional offer for your visa approval rate. But if you do use a conditional offer, you need to explain the delays with the high school exam and the TOEFL exam, and then explain that you will update the file afterwards. I know the processing is also quite slow in Nepal, so make sure you give yourself a lot of time for that. For sure. Thanks for answering that, Jenna. I know that that's a, it's a tough question. It's a hard question um, that we've been posing and asking ourselves for, as you said, many years. Um, but also, I know that when, if students were to receive a refusal from immigration within Canada, they will get a notice and they get actually a very large file um, that um, notes why they were refused. Could you maybe touch on that? So this counselor, if they have access or if, if they're helping students and they receive that refusal, where they might look to see what refusal or what was noted in the file? Yes, very good point, Jordan. So if you do receive a visa refusal, you can write to that specific visa office. So there's an email address for every office. So um, it would be madrid at gic.cic.ca. Um, and you would send an email saying that you've received the refusal, give the file number and ask for the, the detailed notes on your file. So it does take a little bit of time, but then you will receive probably about a hundred page document back. Uh, it's very hard to kind of read through, but if you go through each area, you will see the specific notes on why you, your visa was refused. So this will at least give you some information when you want to reapply or maybe appeal the decision of the officer um, and why they have refused it, especially if they say um, we refused it due to finance and you say you clearly showed you had the funds to come to Canada. So that might be worth an investigation. Or if uh, they say, you know, not sufficient funds and you showed 5,000, they said we want to see around $30,000 Canadian, then you know that's the reason why. So make sure that when you resubmit you have the appropriate funds to be approved. Awesome. Thanks for uh, adding that, Jen. And then I, I'll let you answer the question that came through on Facebook Live there. Yeah, we had a question from Manu Sri Kim come through on Facebook. So Manu is asking, when can I pay tuition fees for the winter term? If I pay the GIC now, can I use it for January intake visa? So the tuition fees can be paid in advance. There is information on our website how to make that payment. You don't get billed tuition until you register for classes. However, you can make electronic uh, payments in advance and it would sit on a credit on your account. So through the My Info portal, you can always look at your statement of account, which would show any past payments that are sitting on there. So for the GIC, usually it is specific to that term, but I know with COVID right now, there are many delays. So many students have the GIC for the fall term and are deferring to the winter term and are still using that same document. Um, just make sure you include in your statement of purpose or in your proof of finance upload. Please note this is from the September intake um, or maybe get an updated letter from your bank from the GIC saying that the, the funds are still sitting there and now will be uh, deferred to the winter start just so that it matches with, with your letter of acceptance. Awesome, thanks Jen. And then I'll let you answer a few of the open questions in the Q&A right now. Sounds good. So the next one in the Q&A. Do you, we need to inform the university after getting the first stage of approval? Are there any changes we need to make? Because there were questions about the visa when registering for courses that were answered before approval. So as you know, the situation is consistently changing and IRCC is adding more and more details as we are kind of asking them to um, give more explanation on their rules or exemptions. So after getting the first stage of approval, you can notify myself or Sarah Melvin in our office as we are tracking this for you. Once you have that first stage of approval, you can confidently register and start your classes for the September intake. And then once travel restrictions are lifted, we can start to talk about arriving in Canada. Um, I feel like I missed part of this question. There, uh, that's, there's not really any changes to make. Even before you receive that first stage of approval, you can start to register and start your classes. You just feel more confident that you'll be approved the study permit if you've already had that first stage of approval. Once you have that, just hold on to it and then wait for the, for the final update from IRCC saying that you have the final stage approval. So the next question coming in. For the winter term, masters, once I get, a, oh, once after getting a study permit, then do I register for classes or do I register for classes and then apply for a study permit? 
So because of processing delays, and even before processing delays, I encourage students to apply for a study permit as soon as they are accepted to Lakehead. You need to allow for enough time for processing. Normally it takes at least eight weeks for a study permit to be approved, so we always encourage you to apply early. Um, and registration only opens at specific times. So for undergraduate students, you technically, technically can be accepted right now, register for classes, and apply for your permit all at once. Um, but if you're a master's student and your registration comes a little bit later, just show your letter of acceptance, um, and then you can go ahead and do your study permit. You may be registering for your classes before the study permit is approved, which is also okay. The next question. question we have is, I'm hoping to start my class in January. I would like to register a bank account for my financial safety. As an international student, what would be the right process or is there any recommended bank for us? Jen, I know um, you would probably have more experience in this question than I would, so can I pass it off to you? I know that we won't necessarily recommend a single bank, uh, but we would encourage students to certainly uh, explore and shop around the Canadian banks to see which one is best suited for you. Also, depending on which campus you're joining, um, if it's important to you that you are banking with a, a company that has a physical location, uh, make sure that they do have a branch office in the city that you're joining, whether it be Aurelia, whether it be Thunder Bay, or potentially even very far like a Georgian partnership. Uh, that might be an important consideration because there are a few banks that operate uh, solely online or they operate within Canada, but they don't necessarily have a uh, office here in Thunder Bay, but you can still join them as a bank. So that's a, a consideration that I would recommend, but maybe I'll let Jen take it over from there. And I would pretty much echo that, Jordan. Like we know um, the GIC banks for like, if you have a guaranteed investment certificate, you must use Scotiabank or the HSBC not HSBC, ICIC Bank. Um, there are two banks. So uh, Scotiabank is here in Thunder Bay. It's wonderful. It's convenient. They have wonderful points that you can get to go to the movies and students seem to love their accounts. However, of course, I'm a Royal Bank of Canada. I use them personally and we also have them on campus. What's really cool is they've opened up this little hub right beside our Starbucks on the Thunder Bay campus. Um, so you can open bank accounts, you can talk to client services and really deal with any issues you have for banking. Plus, us, you can take out cash anytime off campus without being charged any fees. So of course, um, there are a lot of banks. There's a TD Bank, there's tons of BMO, and they love students. So no matter where you go, you probably will end up with a free bank account, like without any service fees while you're a student, and maybe even a free iPad or something cool that they will give you for joining with them. So you can check out which bank is offering what, um, but even if you have a GIC that is locked with Scotiabank, your personal bank can be with any um, bank that you prefer. So I uh, know that all the Canadian banks are quite reputable. Uh, the only one I would caution is the ICIC Bank is actually there is no location here in Thunder Bay so you do have to deal with them remotely and I know with um, when you're opening up the GIC it's quite a bit of paperwork back and forth with students so um, sometimes you don't have a choice and it is locked in with that bank but that's the only bank I would caution students as they don't have a physical location in Thunder Bay. For sure and for any students that might be uh, interested in setting up that bank when they first arrive of course uh, as a part of our international orientation um, typically in a, a traditional orientation year, we would bring a community fair where uh, these banking institutions can actually come and set up booths and help the students set up their bank accounts on the spot or at least get them started. Uh, so that won't be happening this year, unfortunately, but that's not to say that we aren't happy to help you or assist you. Uh, so once you actually join and you're ready to join us here in Canada and you're ready to set up that bank, before choosing a bank, if you want to set up a, a meeting with one of our international student advisors, they can advise you on some of the things that we've chatted about today. Uh, and then, of course, they can also discuss sort of what banks have physical location, what banks are solely online, all that sort of stuff, and maybe what the repercussions are. As Jen mentioned, though, of course, uh, RBC does have that location on campus now, so that's quite convenient for our students that bank with them, um, but also for students that are interested in maybe receiving, as Jen mentioned, a free reward for signing up. I've also seen banks offering iPads or Apple Watches or even TVs for signups. So that's something that I would take into consideration if I was in your position. Um, if you truly don't care what bank it is, see who's going to offer you the best prize, essentially. So Jen, I'll, I'll pass it back to you. I know, um, oh, there, there's a question, sorry, that just popped up. I don't know if you've had a chance to read it. 
Okay, no, but I'll read it now. So I have deferred my mission masters to the winter intake and have recently submitted my funds GIC to the Nova Scotia Bank and um, estimate the date of arrival well, December 15th. Okay, so when will they consider the amount for the fall 2020 intake? Yes, they'll consider that. That's fine. Like I said, the GIC is through, it's called Scotia Bank, Nova Scotia Bank. I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> Bank of Nova Scotia. It's changed to kind of Scotia Bank in the, in Canada in the last 10 years, but same bank, anyways. Um, but yes, they will still consider this for your term. So I know you have a master's program. You've already submitted your study permit application, I'm assuming. So if you want to be on the safer side, you can always send in a web form. I can even share the link right now. And you can just tell IRCC, listen, I've applied with this. My GIC is full here the fall term, but please note I am coming in September. And you may be able to even connect with your bank there that's provided the GIC to give them an update. I honestly don't think this affects it. The GIC is the GIC, so it will still sit there as long as you haven't used it. Um, so it's not like it expires if you don't use it right in September, um, but you should still notify the bank and notify IRCC that you will likely be deferring your admission to the winter term. Normally this happens. So before COVID even happened, uh, students, if they did not get their study permit approved in time, it would be approved maybe in October or November, and then they would just come to Canada later. So it's not like they have to do anything different for their application. They just have a new letter of admission when they're entering Canada. Awesome. And so we did receive another question here. It says, is it clear uh, when Lakehead would decide on the course delivery method for winter term? Unfortunately, we do not have a, a firm deadline or date that will publish that information. Uh, something that I want to know to all our viewers, um, that our upper administration here at Lakehead University, as well as all of our working groups to ensure uh, the, the safety of our students, our staff, our faculty, all those sorts of questions. Um, that is at our number one priority here. Um, and so we will not make any decisions along the lines of that until we have more information from the public health authorities of Canada and we see uh, how this pandemic plays out for uh, the upcoming months. Uh, of course, our, our hopes as facilitators of an education and having that university experience is that you'll be joining us again in January in person. Uh, but as I've mentioned though, it's simply too early to say at this point. Um, if we are in a similar recommendation or a similar timeline as to fall 2020, uh, that decision hopefully will come out uh, a few months ahead of time. Um, and you will certainly have enough time to prepare, whether it be if you're joining us in Canada or you're gonna continue online. Uh, we'll give you plenty of uh, time there to plan accordingly. Um, if you do have questions though, uh, I always encourage you to follow us on our social media channels. Lakehead International is our handle on Facebook and Instagram. You can check us out there and these sorts of major announcements such as delivery method for winter 2021, those will all be published on our social medias as well. If you're already receiving our mass emails uh, or email communications, whether it be on your Lakehead account or your personal email account, uh, you will continue to receive those emails. Uh, and regular updates. So please monitor that on a regular basis, especially for students if you've deferred your offer. So if you were initially joining us for fall 2020 and you've now deferred your offer to winter 2021, um, we want to make sure that you stay connected with us this fall and we'll have regular communications and any updates that we do have about the course delivery but also programming for January. Um, we'll be sending those out to you um, to stay you informed as you are a student of Lakehead um, now that you've deferred. So it looks like we've uh, answered all of the questions thus far, brought us almost right to the full hour. Uh, so I'll remind our viewers, um, technically we have 12 more minutes on today's session. So if you do have any more questions and you're joining us over on Zoom, you can use the Q&A to submit those questions now. If you're joining us on our Facebook live stream, you can certainly comment on that video. Our Lakehead experts, uh, each hen will be behind the scenes answering questions, so she'll either feed that over to us or she'll answer um, by commenting back to you. Uh, if you're watching this as a recording, I was uh, didn't mention this before, but if this is a recording of the video, uh, whether it be on Facebook or whether it be on our YouTube channel, you can certainly comment on the video. We'll get the notification, we'll certainly check up and uh, see what's happening over there. Um, without further ado though, I'll pass it over to Jen. I know we received another question um, in there and she'll be happy to answer that. Thanks Jordan. So um, 
question coming in. I have submitted my application for a study permit about two months ago, and I have not been able to go for biometrics yet. How much earlier before 90 days should I submit the web form? So two parts to this question. So for biometrics, there are current exemptions in place. So even if you've received a request telling you you must go for biometrics within the next 90 days, if you physically cannot go, like your visa center is closed or in Canada, there still continues to be nowhere to submit your biometrics you will be exempt from this. So what happens is they will eventually collect biometrics once they have that part sorted out, but it's not going to stop the processing of your application. And I'm now seeing students get that first stage of approval without their biometrics. So things are starting to continue to move along the study permit path of approval. Um, so the next part of it, is the web form. So you cannot set a web form in to check the status of your study permit application until they get to your processing date. So I'll share the link for processing times here on the chat. So you can go to the main page of the IRCC website when you select what application you've applied for, what country you've applied for, and it will tell you the date they're working on. So they will say, we are working on applications submitted on February 10th. And if you've submitted your application after that date, please do not submit an IRCC web form. They will just tell you that they um, are in the middle of processing your application and it will kind of be a canned response. But if they've passed that processing date, then you can definitely check into that um, and they should give you an update or maybe even speed up the process of your application. So again, both links are there for the web form and processing. So say um, you applied on June 10th and they say they're working on the 15th, then this is a good time to be sending in a web form to say, hey, what's going on with my application? And I see there's kind of a second part of this. So how should I send the web form to IRCC about not being able to do biometrics? So there's no need to update IRCC whatsoever. They know that you can't do biometrics. So even if there's a request sitting in your account and you've made that application fee, it will just sit there. So you should eventually see the application be approved. What I'm envisioning happening is that IRCC will just have the port of entry collect the biometrics when you finally come in. Um, but we will wait for updates to see what's happening with that but updates for biometrics. There's absolutely nothing you have to do about biometrics. You don't need to notify IRCC or nothing. Um, you can read the information right here from this link, um, but it's automatically done for exemption. So you're just going to sit there. Your application will continue to be processed even though the biometrics are not done. Awesome, thanks so much, Jen. Um, so I'll uh, move on to the next part of the presentation. I'll chat a bit about Follow us in, following us on our social media channels. So as you've heard me say quite a few times already, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Our Facebook handle is Lakehead University International. That is the official international page. Our Instagram is Lakehead International. Um, those are our main social medias. We'll post regular updates as well as sneak peeks or uh, insider previews in the Lakehead University. Um, but as I've mentioned, those important announcements are, are really what I encourage students to follow us for as we'll post those as soon as possible on our social media. As if we hear from uh, Lakehead University's president about our upcoming winter term, hopefully within a few hours, we'll have that post up on social media to make sure that all of our followers are informed and up to date. If you head over to our YouTube channel, it is the main university channel, so Lakehead University. We share it with the entire university, but we do have two dedicated playlists for you. The first one is Lakehead International. It's a way for you to explore Lakehead, learn more about Lakehead, but also hear from some of our international students, maybe students from uh, fellow students from your hometown or your home country. Um, and then we also have a second playlist, the Lakehead International Lives playlist. The Lives playlist is where all of our recordings for our webinars go. So today's webinar uh, will be uploaded to our YouTube channel in the next few days. Um, and then at the end of this week, uh, we will send out a final email for the Lakehead International Live series uh, with recording links and YouTube links for all of that as well. We'll send out more information as to how you can stay connected with us uh, and answer, get, get questions, answers to your questions, pardon me, um, for anything that you maybe missed on not able to, not being able to join us on our live webinars anymore. Um, our live webinars will certainly be back this fall. I'll be hosting them once again this fall. Um, we haven't finalized the schedule quite yet or the content quite yet, uh, but I'm excited to have a few week break and then be back and communicating with our students uh, and hopefully connecting with you again. 
I'll also encourage our viewers to take a virtual campus tour. So if you head over to lakeview.ca forward slash tours, you can check out either Aurelia campus or the Thunder Bay campus. You get to explore the buildings, residents, facilities, labs, um, but also I think one of the best parts is that you do get to walk around essentially outside and you get to see panoramas of how beautiful our campuses are. Um, and I think that once you see where we get to work every day and where our current students get to study every day essentially, uh, you'll also be sold on Lakehead University as your study destination for a truly Canadian experience. Um, I'm going to flip over to the Q&A. I saw something come up. Uh, so we do have a question. Would you recommend CIBC Bank for GIC? I know Jen, you marked that, so I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, so um, there are only specific banks that can be used for GIC. CIBC does have a location here in Thunder Bay. I'm not sure if they are approved for GICs. I haven't really had any students go through it. In my experience, I would say definitely Scotiabank is the number one where I've seen students go through there and then the odd student has that ICIC bank. Um, so if you can, I would say go through the Nova Scotia Bank or the Scotia Bank is what it's called, yes. <laughs> awesome, I'm not gonna lie. When I saw that question come up saying Nova Scotia Bank, I was also quite confused what bank they were referencing. Um, but now I, I totally acknowledge that there is that slight name change in the, the last 10 years or so. And, now they, they formally go by Scotiabank and that's more of their uh, common, commonly known name for a younger students at least. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, I think that wraps it up. I know that we're uh, just a few minutes away from 11 o'clock. But like I said, if you do have any more questions, um, our emails are on the screen. I'll flip it back really quickly here. Uh, there, there's the emails right there. So if you have your phone, take a photo of the screen or take a screenshot. Uh, and you can stay connected with us offline. Uh, I also encourage our viewers to join us tomorrow for our Wednesday weekly with our admissions team. We'll be joined by undergraduate admissions as well as graduate admissions. Entering your questions related to applications, next steps, admission requirements, all sorts of stuff. So we'll be happy to see you then. Um, but I will say bye for now and uh, hopefully we'll chat soon. Thanks, Thanks again, Jordan, for having me. Of course, bye Jen. Mm -hmm.